February 14, 2010, Richard Showick of Snellville, Georgia, had arranged to go to Belton Bridge Park to meet up with his wife, Stacy Showick, in order to exchange Valentine's Day gifts. Richard would never meet up with his wife, and Belton Bridge Park would be the last place he ever visited. As usual, this voiceover contains graphic and potentially disturbing content that may be inappropriate for some. Viewer discretion is advised. 38-year-old Stacy Showick, a mother of three, was in a seemingly happy relationship with her fifth husband, Richard Showick. Richard was a 46-year-old hot air ballooning enthusiast who had adopted her children from previous marriages. After arranging a romantic Valentine's Day meeting in the park, Richard was the first and only member of the couple who made it to the park. Instead of being met by his wife, Stacy, Richard was met by Reginald Coleman, a personal trainer who went by the name Mr. Results, whom Stacy had met through a subordinate at work, Lenitra Ross. Stacy had been having an affair and made the conscious decision that in order to continue her extramarital relationship, her husband Richard had to go. Knowing someone who did, quote, illegal things, Stacy attempted to put a hit out on her husband. The man she contacted never reached back out to her, and in her disappointment, Stacy confided in her colleague, Lenitra Ross, that she wanted someone to kill her husband. Ross replied, well, I know somebody who could do that for you. Ross put Stacy in communication with the aforementioned personal trainer, Reginald Coleman. Stacy later testified that Ross had informed her Coleman, quote, had a lot of experience as a hitman. The three accomplices spoke of the murder plot together over dinner and discussed a venue for the murder, as well as payment to Coleman. The trio finalized their plans at a Walmart that they eventually left to scout Belton Bridge Park. Stacy allegedly gave Coleman a 2009 Chevrolet Impala that she had been trying to sell for her grandparents, and then claimed she never saw him again. In exchange for Ross's role in the murder plot, Stacy allegedly gave her a home she owned. Ross had allegedly been living in the house for months. Richard arrived at Belton Bridge Park well after dark to meet up with his wife in a romantic Valentine's Day tryst. When Richard arrived, he was met by Coleman, who shot Richard to death in a remote area of the park. Richard's family and law enforcement all believed that Stacy was involved from the beginning, but it would take three months to gather enough evidence to arrest Stacy, as well as her two accomplices. Stacy immediately admitted she had been having an affair, but was not as quick to admit she had hired a hitman to kill her husband. During the court trials, Stacy tried to shift the blame to her late husband Richard, who she claimed was molesting her children. Stacy claimed that her children had been acting out recently, including shoplifting, and it must have been due to the trauma of being molested by their adoptive father. The children later testified that Richard had done nothing of the sort, and there was no evidence ever found of Richard doing anything untoward towards his adopted children. All three of the masterminds of the Valentine's Day murder plot were put on trial and given the same sentences, life in prison without the chance of parole. Despite the state pushing for the death sentence, Stacy was spared for her cooperation in the trial of her accomplice, Lenitra Ross. When asked what Stacy had to say to get a promise from the prosecutors that they wouldn't seek the death penalty against her, she replied, I don't consider life in prison a deal a bargain. Thank you for watching another episode of A Brief History. Happy Valentine's Day!